Another Cat Attack podcast via Zoom, thanks to Curse Hire, and lucky enough to be joined by just one of the absolute superstars of the Geelong Football Club of recent times. 209 games, 55 goals, premiership player in 2011. We absolutely love him here at K-Rock Football because he's one of us now and we can't wait to have him in the commentary box at some stage when season 2020 resumes in the AFL. Tom Lonigan joins us. Hello, Doms. Morning, Key. Hello. Very well. Great to be catching up with you in these very weird times. Usually you and I get on the phone and have a bit of a, a natter, but we thought, oh, well, we'll do it by video and give the fans what they want, a bit of Tom Lonigan love. Yes. Yeah, no, it is strange times, mate. Absolutely. Um, I think the word, I, I've heard the word unprecedented more than I've ever heard a word said before, but um, it's true. It's, uh, it's It certainly is unbelievable, but a bit of um, reprieve yesterday with um, Daniel Andrews coming out. So hopefully there's a few uh, restrictions start to get relaxed over the coming weeks. It was going to be a big year for you. Obviously, you're the talent manager at the Calder Cannons, which was your uh, alma mater in the uh, in the NAB League as it is now. And you've got, obviously, K-Rock football commitments. You're going to join us for a few games in the uh, in the commentary box uh, to give your thoughts on the game. But uh, you're a new dad again. Well, you're not a new dad again. You're a dad again. Yes. Yeah, I am. It's, um, you know, with all this... All the corona stuff that's going on. It's um, yeah, we had a little sage, which come up seven weeks tomorrow. So right in the thick of it, um, it's been been good to be able to be home and um, and uh, help out the wife. And I've obviously got two other boys, so they're pretty busy. So um, yeah, look, it's been a really really nice time. Um, in saying that, I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to footy starting again, King. Yeah, absolutely. Get out of the house. <laughs> Just a little bit from time to time. You come on, you can admit it. No, nobody <laughs> can think. Um, does that mean grandparents haven't seen their new grandchild? Uh, Mum just had a brief crossover with, with Sage. Um, I think she was here for a day before restrictions come in. But um, your dad hasn't seen little Sage. So only virtually like we're doing now. But um, we're going to head up to Yarrawong in the next couple of days to, uh, to see them now that, um, as I said, the restrictions are relaxed and we can, we can go say good day. How hard has it been to be a talent manager of a, a Melbourne-based or and a, a northern Melbourne-based uh, NAB League club and stay connected with, with your players and your coaching staff and keep them, I suppose, informed when, you, when you're based in Geelong? Oh, look, it's... I mean, with, with the um, communi- telecommunications and all the, um, you know, w- what we can do now, uh, it's, it makes it a whole lot easier um, to be able to get on the phone and have a group um, conference, uh, Zoom... Um, whatever you want to call it, um, we're, we're, we're staying connected and that's the most important type of thing at the moment. Um, as most people know, AFL industry has gone through a um, yeah, probably one of the hardest times in its history with what's going on and 90% of the workforce has been stood down, me included. So, um, look, I'm, I'm trying to keep in contact with all the players and, and of course, the staff just to... Yeah, check in with them and make sure they're going okay. Um, we're uh, we're hopeful, but we weren't sure what's going to happen in the second half of the year. We've obviously got to wait and hear what Gil says the next day or two, hopefully today, with um, the announcement of the, the resumption of the season. So, fingers crossed we see some footy, but um, yeah, a little bit up in the air at the moment. Okay. Obviously, uh, last year, the Cannons provided uh, one of the Smokies in the draft. I think we're all looking forward to seeing old Frankie Evans uh, pull on the hoops for the uh, for the Cats. It, ha- it hasn't happened um, at any significant level. Obviously, we've seen, I think he might have played a VFL practice match in there before we, uh, we got shut down. But uh, is he somebody we can get excited about based on the, I think, six quarters he might have played for Calder? <laughs> yeah, look, I'd, I can't give you a whole lot of information. Stephen Wells, obviously... Has, uh, has watched him a couple of times and um, the Geelong recruiting team. But, um, look, he came into the Cannons program after just kicking bags of goals with, um, with um, old Brunswick there in the, in the VAFA. And he was, he was just the ultimate professional when he came into the program. And uh, I think his, his first game, we had him training for about three or four weeks and only by luck, one of our other good players got injured and we put him in and he had 35 and kicked... I think three or four goals up in Wangarara against Murray Bush Rangers. So we knew uh, from that day we had a pretty good player. Unfortunately, he didn't play for the rest of the year. I think he actually played the next game for a half, kicked two goals in that game, and he was done for the year. So can't really give you too much on him, but I, 
from what I've seen on the training track and um, and of that game, he looks like he's he's got a uh, he's got the general prowess of a, of a small forward and knows how to kick goals. So I think Cat supporters will will love him down the track. He will take time, but he'll be I think he'll become a, a reasonable player for the Cats. He might be one bloke that's benefited from this isolation where he's probably been able to get a pro, given a program and, I suppose, build on his fitness and build on his strength uh, without having to worry about playing footy as well? Yeah, look, I mean, you, you've, got to, you've got to take the positives out of, out of the negative situation. You know, um, I think he'd be keen to get back into that professional environment, um, given that he hasn't come through the, the, the natural pathways of, of um, the NAB League. Um, and and really didn't experience only experienced three or four months there as as a draft a new draftee. So I think he'd be pretty keen to get back into the you know the, the guts of, of an AFL season, what it looks like week to week preparation, recovery, um, meetings, all those type of things. I think it'd be good for him to experience that. You know, spending time with the development coaches <clears throat> and whatnot. And unfortunately for him, it's all a bit up in the air with with what he's going to go back to because. Um, Obviously, with this new soft cap, um, which is going to going to take effect, um, uh, whether it's this year, it definitely will next year. So, um, look, I think for him, he'd be, he'd be, yeah, he would be, he'd be, he'd be doing his best to um, get as fit as he can, but he'd be definitely keen to get back into the cats environment. Yep, fantastic. We've got you on for a reason because we're continuing K Rock's lockdown classics. Hopefully, we're not playing too many more of these, and we're back calling. 2020 AFL football, but we've been able to throw back for a few classic games in recent Cats history, some that you've featured in, the 2011 Grand Final being one of those. But this week, we go back to round 21, 2016. This is before Richmond were any good. Uh, They had no flag, and you played them at the MCG. You needed a win to move back into the top four. Their season was shot, and they made life really difficult for you that afternoon. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, I, rem- I remember we just we had a heap of entries early in the in the game and just couldn't put any scoreboard pressure on, um, and it ended up it's just one of those hard fought slog. It was just a slog, hard slog game, and um, I think Richmond got out to a thirty five point lead midway through the third quarter, um, and, and they might have even been thirty five points up at three quarter time from my memory, but we scored, we, we banged on about six or seven goals in the last quarter. I don't think they scored. So we got home. We knew we had, um, there was a, game, a lot of games like that during that period of time where we, we probably were facing a team that didn't have much to really prove, you know, their season was done. We had to still go out and play the game and secure a top four spot, as you said. So it was a, uh, it was a, it was a tough game, but we'll, Obviously, able to do it, get over the line, and um, and get the job, get the W. I remember, um, I remember Hawk and Rance duel that day. Um, Rance played unbelievable um, throughout the day. I was just to remember the Richmond um, cheer squad and, and the, the the fans just roaring every time Hawk and and uh, Rance went for a contest. And uh, and that's what you enjoy about footy is those one on one battles. It's a really I was up the other end on Rewalt. Um, he didn't have much influence, Kingy, but, um, <laughs> um, but uh, that, that duel, Hawk and, and Rance, was, uh, it was fantastic to watch. And uh, 36th birthday upon us as well. It is, mate, yes. Um, Sunday, 36. So, um, yeah, look, as we were talking about off air before, mate, it's, it's one of those things now you don't even sort of try, to, try to look too much about what the number is now. It's all about... Uh, you're just trying. You're just trying to put a hold on the years. They're going too fast these days. But um, no, look, uh, I'll get up to Yarrawonga and be able to have a couple of glasses of red wine and um, celebrate with the family. And yeah, it'd be good. Is some good wineries up that Nick? I know, obviously, as you get sort of um, north of Shepparton, um, I think is Monacino's sort of getting up towards your neck of the woods there on, on the northern side of Shep towards the Yarrawonga. Yeah, we're more so heading to the Rutherglen. Rutherglen and um, Wangaratta sort of region. Um, there's some beautiful wineries over there. Campbell's Winery, All Saints is, a, is a, obviously a famous one. Um, there's uh, yeah Queen's Birthday Weekend in um, oh, the Winery Walkabout. The Winery Walkabout, famous famous Winery Walkabout. Can you do yourself a favour and, and get on a on a bus up there and uh, 
in Queen's birthday weekend if we've got the ease, if the restrictions are eased. So one of the great weekends and uh, yeah, people from everywhere, people from Melbourne are now coming up for it. So it's a it's a ripping weekend and um, obviously you get to taste all the best produce up there. So it, uh, do yourself a favour there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Dom's have a wonderful 36th birthday. Congratulations on the uh, the birth of number three. Is is that it, or uh, or are we trying for more? No, mate. No, no. Q well and truly in the rack now. Um, no, I'll be booking an appointment with uh, with the doctor Snip at some point, and uh, I'll enjoy uh, enjoy my three. Um, but uh, yeah, that's it for me. Yeah, well, mate, always a pleasure to talk footy with you. Uh, great to have you as part of the K-Rock team. Great to have you reflecting on that clash with Richmond back in uh, 2016. And uh, we, uh, we wish you all the best as we come out of this. And hopefully there's some good news in terms of the NAB League and that, that they're back playing at some stage. And, uh, and obviously if we're playing AFL, uh, we'll hopefully see in the K-Rock commentary box at some stage as well. Yeah, look forward to it, Keeney. Thanks very much, mate. Good on you.